The new year kicks off at Starbase. Players don preps for their extravehicular activity. Falcon 9 puts a crap ton of satellites in orbit. Falcon Heavy is on deck, and we finish with today's honorable mentions. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. The holidays are over, and so are the parties SpaceX threw for their employees and plus ones at Renton Stadiums and airplane hangars in LA and Cape Canaveral respectively. Several videos of the events going viral on that CCP Tic Tac social media site. Which explains the lack of road closures lately. Nobody should be operating heavy machinery while hungover. But those who could rally did, continuing their work behind the scenes putting the finishing touches on Starship 25, like installing its PEZ door cover and lifting Starship 24 off Pad B and perhaps soon closer to the orbital launch mount in anticipation for the re-return of Booster 7 and potentially its final restack. B7 did emerge and approach the door of High Bay 2 the other day, and while road closures for today have been scrubbed, several are booked for next week so the booster may conduct its monthly migration down Highway 4. Again, it's possible stacking could occur, followed by a full wet dress rehearsal and maybe a 33-engine static fire somewhere in there before the highly anticipated maiden orbital flight attempt. The program that will eventually put the first crew on Starship, Polaris, is still training their four astronauts for the first Dragon mission leading up to it, Polaris Dawn, one that will entail SpaceX's first ever extravehicular activity. To prepare them for the EVA, last month the crew participated in a decompression sickness study inside NASA's 20-foot chamber in Houston, Texas. Quoting the Players Program's article on their website, they spent just under two days simulating expected pressure and oxygen profiles to determine how likely it is for symptoms of the bends to occur, if at all performing 100% oxygen pre-breathe exercises in the airlock. The Dragon spacecraft, however, does not have an airlock, instead requiring the entire vehicle and all crew members to decompress down to vacuum with a limited pre-breathe. In anticipation of the mission's EVA attempt, the study characterizes the risk of the bends for Polaris Dawn and will help SpaceX develop a new decompression model for EVAs from Dragon. Now on Tuesday, SpaceX launched its sixth transport mission to low Earth orbit from Slick 40 at Cape Canaveral. Transporters are rideshare missions for smaller CubeSat, Microsats, PincoSats, and orbital transfer vehicles that want to pull their money together for a ride to space, like a group rate for Uber. The 114 payloads on board were deployed one at a time over the course of about half an hour. The first stage flew for a record-tying 15th time. SpaceX shared a complete launch to landing from the booster's perspective on Twitter, touching down beautifully on the coast at LZ-1. One landing leg deploy. Seco. Stage one landing confirmed. Currently, there are a couple Falcon missions scheduled for next week, including one Falcon Heavy mission for the Space Force, launching no earlier than the 12th. USSF-67 side boosters will both be of the reused variety, and SpaceX will once again be expending the new core booster to push the upper stage on its way to geosynchronous orbit. This will be the second Falcon Heavy launch in just a couple of months. The previous was USSS-44 on November 1st, and 67's mission is just the first of five Falcon Heavies expected to lift off in 2023. There won't be any space eccentric content next week, so unfortunately, whatever does indeed launch, I won't be around to watch it with you. But no, I will be with you in spirit. At least I very well could be since I'll be tripping balls in Mexico. Now a word about today's sponsor, Epic TV. Another solid avenue for you to gather important current events everyone should know about. Epic TV is a censorship-free platform with original news programs and award-winning documentaries investigating critical issues not covered anywhere else. Their reporters bring you first-hand interviews and on-the-ground footage of the most critical matters in society affecting our liberties, health, and safety. And you can watch Epic TV shows and documentaries on your phone, computer, tablet, or Roku TV. So if you're looking for an honest and accurate news source, check them out today. I even have a special offer for my viewers. Simply sign up and start watching. No credit card required and no strings attached. Then if you decide to subscribe within 14 days, it's just $1 for two months. So go to watchepic.com slash space eccentric and subscribe. That's watchepoch.com slash SpaceX centric. And now it's time for today's honorable mention. We lost another Apollo legend this week. On January 3rd, Walter Cunningham, at the age of 90, passed away in Houston from complications resulting from a fall he had. He joined the Navy in 51 and a year later became a fighter pilot for the Marine Corps, flying 54 missions in Korea. Then was selected by NASA in 63 as part of Group 3 and flew a single mission, Apollo 7, as the Lunar Module Pilot, what became the first crewed Apollo mission after the ill-fated tragedy of Apollo 1. Apollo 7 was in Earth orbit for 11 days. Today I would tell people about this, that was the longest, it was the most ambitious and the most successful first test flight 
of any new flying machine ever. Godspeed, Walter. And as a bonus, I want to quickly feature the sequel to Starship Shuffle, titled Stage Zero, a card game designed in Canada and built in America that puts players in charge of their own 2D starbase. Releasing in a few days, the card game once again features me. Only this time, I'm the penalty card. Well, I'm sharing it with some other guy, but that's me right up here, giving the finger to Authorita. This is what started Space Wars 2 a couple months ago because groomers and pedos wanted me canceled out of the game, despite the fact I started this fucking YouTube genre of SpaceX news that quickly grew out of control with lib nerd copycats and clickbaiters. But the creators didn't cave to the woke mob, so check out their website with the link below. Cancel culture can suck my balls. Suck my balls. You're a fat bitch. Well, that's all for this week, folks. Thanks so much for stopping by. Shout out to my supporters keeping the dream alive. And I hope you space pirates have a nominal weekend and work week. I'll see you back here two Fridays from now. Until that time, Godspeed.